about the frontiers. How the frontiers are produced and what comes after the frontier, let's say, past. The first thing to reflect upon is what kind of frontier are we talking about? The rise of capitalism between 1450 and 1750 set the pattern for everything that came after this. And for the first time in history, we saw an inversion of a pattern that had held for thousands and thousands of years. For those millennia, population would grow within pre-capitalist civilizations, settlement would spread, and commerce, markets, and commodity production and exchange would follow those settlers. For the first time in world history, during the, what's called the long 16th century, between 1450 and 1640, you saw the opposite occur, that instead of population moving out first, you saw the commodity moving out first, and then populations following this. So the classic example of this is what we call the sugar commodity frontier. Now, sugar was as important to these centuries as the automobile was to the 20th century. Sugar was a mass commodity. That is, you could tell uh, a great number of very important things about the modern world at that time through understanding sugar. And, it, and the, the mass production of sugar required the mass production and importation of African slaves. So it was tremendously brutal and devastating to human nature, but it was also tremendously brutal and devastating to the soils and the forests and the waterscapes and everything. Now, what this story tells us is that the violence of the modern world and the violence of those frontiers, you can go to the Maderas and see what happened in the 15th and 16th centuries, and then to northeastern Brazil in the 16th and 17th centuries, and then after that to the various islands of the Caribbean. What we saw at each step was a new frontier moving where new productive organizations, new ways of organizing labor, new systems of credit were imposed at each step. So this was a dynamic system of the frontier, in fact, prefiguring many of the most advanced features of capitalism. Indeed, one of the places where you would see the modern factory system uh, uh, developed was in the sugar frontiers of uh, the New World in these centuries. So the importance of frontiers is that it is on the frontier, especially for agricultural and various metallurgical and mining activities, it is on the frontier that you see the most advanced, the most precocious forms of industrial organization long before they appear in for instance, the textile mills of Manchester in the 19th century. And not only that, but it turns out that the crucial inputs and the crucial sources of capital often flowed from the frontiers into the centers of world finance and world industry. So there is an intimate link between a ceaseless quest for cheap nature on the frontier and the industrialization of core areas in the world system. And I think that that's a story that extends even to the rise of China today, that there is, a, a, which is very much based on the exploitation of a cheap labor frontier in the form of two to 300 million peasants pushed off the land and forced into urban and industrial work.